So you're new to electronics and you have mastered circuits of lighting LEDs up and you want to try your hand at building a little small transistor amplifier. What we got here is um, we're going to use uh, um, an N2222. We're going to um, build a, um, a little common emitter small signal amplifier. Um, and I'm going to show you everything you need to know about biasing it and everything. Um, and I'm going to make it as easy and as simple as possible, especially if you've read up on it or you watched other videos and you just couldn't figure it out how to bias it. Um, I'm going to try to do this without making it over complicated and uh, making the math as easy as I can. So hopefully anybody can use this and um, start building little amplifiers themselves. Okay, to start off with, we need to know some things about our transistor we're going to use here. Um, these are our maximum ratings for our transistor. Um, we're looking at our voltage here for all of our stuff and our amperage. Uh, we're not going to go anywhere near that, so we really don't have to worry about that too much. Um, another thing that you need to be concerned with is the total dissipation of it this one is uh, 625 milliwatts so we're not going to be in that neighborhood either um, temperature if you're concerned with that we're not going to drive this thing where it's going to be very hot hopefully if we get it biased correctly um, we're going to actually set our bias using the HFE here and you'll look under with this is going to be under your current gain and they'll, they give us some uh, ratings on it um, and what they tested it at. And we see here um, HFE for the minimum is uh, 100, maximum 300. Um, I'm not going to test the, um, the transistor out to see what it reads. Besides that, that thing is so finicky and variable. Um, we're going to set our HFE. We're going we're gonna to set it at 100. So we're going to set a gain for 100 on it. Alright, first things first, this is a small signal amplifier. It's not a power amplifier, you know, it's, you're not going to build a, a, a good power amplifier out of just one transistor. No matter how many of these little videos you see from India where they're doing the stuff, yeah, it doesn't work that way. Um, amplifiers are built in multiple stages, have a lot of components. Um, what we're going to do here is just a simple small signal amplifier and we're going to draw it up we're going to use the the uh, 2222 which is an NPN and we're going to bias it with a voltage divider okay uh, one thing we need to understand about this is what we want out of our amplifier um, I'm going to use mine right here is VCC and we're going to drive it with 12 volts alright and then we need to decide how much current we want to put through it um, as we read on our spec sheet it's um, the max dissipation of it was um, 625 milliwatts uh, we're not going to go anything anywhere near that I and mean, it said it can drive uh, one amp but we're going to start off small and we're going to we're going to try to shoot for um, 20 milliamps um, a couple of things you need to know before we get really started on this. Um, oh, I forgot a resistor. Um, you need to understand basic circuits, like stuff um, running um, um, resistors in, in series or parallel and capacitors and stuff. And also you've got to understand Ohm's Law. 
Um, if you don't understand that stuff, maybe you need to watch a video on it. It's not very hard. Uh, but that's about as complicated as math we're going into it. Um, all right, so we've set that we want 20 milliamps, 12 volts. Okay, um, we're going to set our resistors here. We're going to say this is R1, and we're going to do R2. Let's say this one is R3 and R4. Four. Okay, so first thing we want to do, we're going to figure out the value of R1. So we know we're going to start off with 12 volts. All right, the easiest way to go about that is we're going to take 10% of 12 volts. So we're going to pull out our handy dandy calculator here. And 12 volts times 10%. And that gives us 1.2 volts. So, right here we're going to want 1.2 volts. And then Ohm's law will tell us what the resistance is here. What we're going to do is divide that by 0 0.02, which is 20 milliamps. So let me clear this out. 1.2. Divide that by 20 milliamps. And that's going to give us 60 ohms. So the value for this is going to be 60 ohms. Oh, let me put what this is. This is the collector, the base, and the emitter. All right, so R1 is going to be 60 ohms. It's uh, important that you do R1 and not run it straight to ground because you'll get thermal runaway. Like I said, transistors are real finicky. This kind of helps control it. dumps the extra current and stuff in that um, when the re if the resistor and the power fluctuates. Okay, so now we have the value for R1 is 60, 60 ohms. We're gonna come over to R2. And uh, the way we're gonna figure out R2 is remember I told you that, let me get this a little bit closer, is HFE we said is 100. So we're gonna take our 20 milliamps here and we're going to divide it by our HF heat. So 0 0.02 divide that by 100 this is going to come up with 1. So this number right here this uh, for the current is a little too low so we always kick it up by 10. So we're going to take this and we're going to times it by 10. 0 0.02 times 10. And that gives us the sum of 2 milliamps. So we're wanting to run 2 milliamps of current through this. Okay, one thing you need to understand is we have 1.2 volts here at our emitter, and the base has to be higher than the emitter, and it's usually a diode drop higher than the emitter, and the diode's forward voltage is 0.7 volts. So this is really easy. So what we're going to do is take our 1.2 volts that we have at the emitter, and we know the base has to be 0.7 volts higher than that. So we're going to take 1.2 volts, plus 0.7 volts, and that gives us 1.9 volts. So we want 1.9 volts going through here at R2. And we're going to divide this over using Ohm's, Ohm's Law. And remember, with after our H HFE increase, and we're going to go over here to 2 microamps. I mean, two milliamps, I'm sorry. So we're going to divide this by 0, 0, 002. Clear it out. 1.9 divided by 0, 0, 0.002. And that gives us 950 ohms. All right. Now that we have this, we know we're going to put 12 volts through it this way. We're going to figure out R3. 
Well, we already know we've taken 1.9 volts of it from here, so we're going to subtract 12 volts from the 1.9 volts, and that leaves us 10.1 volts here. And we're going to divide this by the same current. Point 0.1 volt, and we're going to divide it by 2 milliamps, and that's going to give us 5,050 ohms. Um, for anybody that's going to write comments down at the bottom that this is not 100% correct, I do realize that you actually want to increase this by uh, times it by 11, times this by 10, but we're making this very easy. Just follow the math that I'm showing you right now, and you will be fine biasing it. Okay, let's see where we're at. So we figured out the resistor here that's going across here. Okay. On a transistor, your collector and emitter current that goes through here is the same. It's also the same on this side. So on this side, we're back at 20 milliamps to figure out R4. All right, this is where we're going to get our um, split our voltage. Okay, the first thing we know is we use 1.2 volts off of with R1 here. So we're going to subtract that from 12 volts. And it gives us 10.8 volts. So we got 10.8 volts to use right here. Okay, now this is where it gets tricky. All right, we're going to feed an AC signal in through here, through the base. Okay, so if we look on a graph here, we have 12 volts. And down here at the bottom, we have 0 volts. Okay, we've used 1.2 volts of it. And this is down here at the bottom. Okay, so what we want to do is set this resistor where the DC voltage is directly in the middle because the AC is going to ride onto the DC. So we want this DC to come in where it's the frequency is going to come in and it's going to ride in the middle. If we go higher, it's going to um, bottom out and give us a flat area. And if we go too low, it's going to bottom out here. Well, this is the part I'm having to redo because I realize my files are all corrupt. Um, yeah, the life of making YouTube videos. And man, I really hate editing YouTube videos. Uh, I need some better equipment too, better lighting. Um, Probably going to build me a whole new workbench. Uh, maybe move all this out to the garage one day. Um, but back to where I was at. Um, I was explaining about how the AC current will ride on the DC. Um, and we want to bias this where it's in the middle. So our AC current can use the maximum swing of the voltage that's left from the 12 volts in the 1.1 1 .1 that we've used down here at the bottom. And um, we want it to ride in the middle. If we go high up here, it's going to flatline and clip and cause distortion. Um, and then if we drop lower below here at the bottom, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to flatten bottom out and it's going to cause uh, distortion. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is bias. We're going to set this um, uh, resistor here, R4 where it's going to be directly in the middle of the voltage we have left. So we had 12 volts and we used 1.2 volts of it. And that gives us 10.8 volts left. So now what we want to do is take that 10.8 volts and just divide it by two and that'll put us in the middle. So then that gives us 5.4 volts. And then we're going to take the 5.4 volts here, use Ohm's law again. We're going to divide it by the 20 milliamps, and that gives us a resistor value for R4 at 270 ohms. So that's what our R4 resistor is going to be set at. 
Um, and that's pretty much all of our resistor values for this circuit. And it's not hard. It's not hard at all. Like I said, the um, the, the 20 milliamps is just something I chose. That's what I want to drive the circuit at. We can uh, you can pick a, a less value or you can pick a higher value. The uh, difference of these two voltages here are um, uh, your, is going to be your voltage gain between the two, as you as I explained here, your your swing of it. Um, and then I redrew this out. So we can set the values for our capacitors. Of course, I already have all the values and stuff wrote out because I had previously recorded this. Um, so to set our capacitor values, the reason why our capacitor values here, what we're what we're trying to do is uh, we're going to block the DC that's coming into it. So um, as I've done a previous video on uh, beginners of capacitors. Remember that capacitors is like a storage tank and it's going to allow the DC to go into this capacitor and it's going to want to store up inside of it and then it'll eventually it'll back up and it's going to allow the AC current to go through. And um, one thing that we need to understand about this is our what's called impedance. Um, impedance is pretty much um, AC resistance or what they call reactants. Um, and it's very important for amplifiers. You have uh, input impedance and output impedance. And on this circuit, it's generally on a small signal amplifier like this. What it's going to be is high output impedance and, and kind of, uh, I guess you could say medium, I mean a high input impedance and kind of a medium output impedance. Um, when you start building your, your final end of your amplifier, like if you're into a power amplifier, you may want to use some a different design, maybe a emitter follower, where you can um, use lower impedance. Impedance, but maybe one day I'll go into all that. And uh, one thing about impedance, it's like trying to move a load with like a, a lever, and then you got a fulcrum here. Um, you know, the longer this is, is more of your high imp input in uh, high input impedance, and then you got your low output impedance, so you can move a bigger load. Picture it being that way. Um, the, the best way to design it is have what they call match impedance where your um, input is going to match the impedance to the, I mean, the output of this side will match the input of the impedance on this side and then vice versa. Your output impedance needs to match your load of whatever you're driving or the other part of your amplifier. And the way we figure this out for your output impedance is we take a combination of what, we, what we're doing is we're going to look kind of inside of the M5 from this direction. So we need to take this resistor, this resistor, and then we're going to in this resistor here. Uh, sometimes we use a bypass, I mean, another capacitor here. We'll use the capacitor right here and bring this down to ground. And this will uh, um, bring our, our um, uh, bypass our A6, AC signal and um, it also increases the gain of our amplifier but with this amplifier I'm designing now really don't need that so uh, we don't have to worry about that but it does affect your input impedance um, the formula for input impedance is uh, 2 pi I mean it's 1 over uh, 2 pi times your frequency times your your I mean um, I'm sorry the capacitor formula for your impedance is uh, 1 over 2 pi times your frequency versus your input or output impedance. Um, your frequency response and stuff, you're getting into some real complicated math, and I'm not, yeah, I'm not trying to get into any of that stuff with frequency response right now. You have to do logarithms and stuff. Um, we're trying to make this really simple. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go online and we're going to use a low pass filter calculator just google it you can put your values in all right so uh right here we're going to start with this capacitor and we're going to set it up we're going to this right here is going to be our output impedance is actually this resistor here that we call our load resistor and it is 270 ohms so we'll put in our value of 270 ohms our um cutoff frequency desire right here um, when you're doing audio 
um, do you have what they call the 2020 rule, which audio frequency that you can hear is 20 hertz on the low end and 20,000 hertz on the high end. So we're going to put on the low end at 20 hertz as our cutoff frequency. And we're going to set this and it tells us that we need to use a 29 microfarad capacitor and I have it wrote down right here, 29 microfarads. And on to find our input impedance, it's a little more difficult, but we can figure it out. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put this resistor, this resistor, and this resistor, um, treat them as if they were in parallel. I've already put the values in the calculator here. We got our 5050 ohm, our 950 ohm, and then right here on this resistor is a 60 ohm, but we want to times it by our HFE, by 100, and that's going to give us 6,000 ohms, and we hit calculate, and we find out that our um, output impedance is 705 ohms. So I've wrote that down here for our output impedance, and then we're going to go, whoops, we're going to go back to our low pass filter calculator and we'll put in 705 ohms and we're going to set that at 20 hertz and we're going to calculate and that's going to tell us that our capacitor needs to be 11 microfarads. So we'll write that down right here. Okay, so now we have R1 is set to 60 ohms. Um, these values, we're not going to probably find resistors of these values. So we'll find something close, or if I have to, I will make uh, resistors into parallels or, se or series to get the values to meet. Um, so we have 60 ohms here, R1. R2 is 950 ohms. R3, 5,050 ohms. And then R4, we got set to 270 ohms. Remember that this is your load resistor here. Um, one thing about this, when you're running current through it, um, you want to maybe use a higher wattage resistor if you're running if you're going to run a lot of amperage through it and and with your uh, volts. So you may want to use if you got like the little eighth watt resistors, you may want to use something higher than that. But um, <coughs> the way this breaks down, you know, we have on this side. Of the circuit we're running 2 milliamps through this side 20 milliamps through this side and uh, the ratio between the two and how it amplifies that's our HFE is 100 and that's how we have it biased and I um, hope this explains everything where you can figure out how to do it yourself like I said uh, you can piddle around with all of this um, if anybody has any questions leave them down in the comments and I usually am pretty good about getting back and responding to questions. Um, if you know something I've done different or you can probably explain something better, leave a comment down at, at uh, below to try to help people out. Um, this is going to be part one of the video. Part two, I'll put it on a breadboard. We'll run some sound through it, see what it sounds like. We'll run uh, frequency through it, and then I'll put it on a scope and we'll take a look at it. I uh, hope this makes it clear um, and easy for you to figure out. And y'all have a nice day.